Welcome to another inspirational message from Chowdean Community Church, Gateshead. For more information about Chowdean, visit www.chowdean.org.uk. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Good morning, church. Can you hear me okay? Good. Hopefully this will continue. As I said, it's only got to last 25 minutes and then James can have peace and quiet for the rest of the day. (laughs) Um, Who here is looking forward to Christmas? Come on, some. Yes, that's a bit better. Who's looking forward to Christmas? Well, I love Christmas. I think it's probably due to the fact that I've never actually grown up. I'm still a big kid at heart. I love the whole thing. I love the Christmas story. I love Father Christmas and the stockings. I love the presents. I love the decorations. I love the Christmas carols. Uh, And I'm really looking forward to our our service here on the 18th of December. I love the nativity plays with the kids, all cute. Ben had his nativity play on Friday, and I couldn't go, but I was reassured he was dead cute in it. And I have to confess, I like the food. I think probably everybody does, don't they? I love the whole thing about Christmas. As I look forward to Christmas, though, and the whole experience, I sometimes think I enjoy the looking forward rather than the big day itself. Does that sound a bit daft? Probably the most favourite day for me is Christmas Eve. Do Do you know what I mean? Because everything's ready, the tree is all decorated... The presents are all wrapped, and you can sit back and listen to Christmas carols, and the tree's all there, and you think, tomorrow's Christmas. It's the expectation of what's going to come. So for me, Christmas Eve is the best bit. Well, as we look forward to Christmas this year, I want us to have a look at two characters that we find in the New Testament in the Bible. I'm not actually sure that I've ever heard a sermon on them before. I'm sure there has been, but I think they sometimes get overlooked. I suppose you could call them support acts, if you like, rather than the main players on the stage of Bible history. Yet, these two faithful characters have still got a lot to teach us today. Now, you can find their story in Luke 2, verses 22 to 38, And with the wonders of modern technology, hopefully that will be appearing, yes, on the screen behind me so you can follow along. It's the story of when Jesus was presented in the temple. It happened about 40 days after Jesus was born. And there were certain ceremonies that they had to go through. And it was at one of these ceremonies that this story takes place. So, when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses... Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem, took him, that's Jesus, to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, As you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword 
will pierce your own soul too. He was talking about when Jesus would die. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She'd lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Well, I think it's important, before we go any further in looking at these characters and what they can teach us, to set the scene, to give you a few basic facts about them, things that I've learned when preparing this message. Well, the obvious thing, really, is that Simeon and Anna were both well advanced in years. One, they were both elderly. Now, with Anna, Luke is very explicit in mentioning how old she was. He actually says she was 84 years of age. But, you know, when I was reading through, it doesn't actually say anywhere how old Simeon was. His age, however, is implied, mainly because God had told him that he wouldn't die until he had seen the Messiah, indicating that he was old and, humanly speaking, he was probably at the end of his life. Everything about the way the passage is written implies he was old as well and that he'd been waiting a very long time. In fact, the key thing is that both of them had probably been waiting a very long time. But what else do we know about Simeon and Anna? Well, both of them were devoted to God and his service. Anna practically lived in the temple. The Bible says she never left it. Both of them were righteous. What does righteous mean? They lived a holy life. And they spent much of their time in prayer, talking to God. Both of them waited on God and listened for words from the Holy Spirit. How do I know this? Because it says in the account in verse 27, moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. It was no coincidence that Simeon just happened to be in the temple at the right time. The Holy Spirit had given him a right royal holy nudge and told him to get himself down to the temple. Both he and Anna were listening out for God to speak but they were both sensitive to God's word and were readily available to serve and obey him. After all, Simeon didn't listen to the nudge and then ignore it. He got up and did as he was instructed. He got himself down to the temple. They were both full of praise and thankfulness to God. The Bible recounts that both of them praised God and that Anna gave thanks to God when she saw the child And I think I'm right in saying that Simeon was in fact the first person to recognize Jesus as the Messiah without actually having to be told who he was by an angel. I think the more I got to know these characters, the more I delved into the Bible to try to get inside their heads, the more I got to like them. I read somewhere that Simeon was an old man who had lost none of his fire for God. An old man who'd lost none of his fire for God. Do you know, and I think the same thing about Anna. She was elderly, but she'd lost none of her fire for God. Despite everything, despite their age, they were still as eager and dedicated as ever they were. But the key thing about both of those characters was that they were looking forward. They were looking forward. But what were they looking forward to or for? They were both looking forward to the arrival of Jesus, the much-promised Messiah who would save Israel and also the Gentiles, the non-Jews. But, you know, as I thought of these faithful old servants who'd been looking forward so patiently and for so long, I began to wonder... How had they kept going? I wonder if they ever had their off days. It doesn't tell you, does it? I mean, do you think they ever had days when they doubted what they'd been told? 
Do you think they ever had days when it was just all too much? Do you think they ever had days when they just wanted a duvet day? Well, I think they probably did, you know. After all, at the end of the day, they were human, just like you and just like me. It can't have been easy for them. They'd been told this, but they'd been waiting years. And they'd been waiting, and they'd been waiting, and they'd been waiting. So how had they managed to stay faithful? How had they managed to keep looking forward? Well, <clears throat> every time I stand up here, I seem to tell you something about myself. So I'm not going to make it any different this time. I'm going to tell you something about myself. Well, it's the fact that I'm not a natural-born walker. Um, walking has become a new interest for me. I wonder if you can guess why. Um, it's thanks to the new man in my life, um, who's had this for a hobby for many years, and is a very experienced walker. Now, don't get me wrong, I've always wanted to be a good walker. I've always wanted to conquer dizzy heights. I've just never really got round to it, and never really had the opportunity, until quite recently. However, I'm having to learn new techniques and acquire a lot of new equipment. Who knew you had to buy so much stuff to go for a walk? Now, James is very, very patient with me. And this was never more demonstrated than when I climbed Ben Ann in the Trossachs earlier this year. Now, I would point out that I believe I climbed a mountain. But I'm informed I climbed a hill. Trust me, it was a mountain. Okay, now there's a picture of me, oh, the one before this, hopefully. There we go, don't look, you have look at it for too long. Um, I had all the equipment, this is just as we were about to set out, and I thought I was the bee's knees. I thought I was going to conquer Everest. I was so geared up, I was all inspired and had the equipment, and yes, I was going to do it. Well, needless to say, I was barely out the car park, and I was having to stop to have a drink of water, and I was very red in the face, and I was puffing like a steam train. Um, all I can say is that it's just as well love is blind, because I was not a good sight. Um, but the walk continued, and it got steeper, and it got steeper. James will tell you himself that the climb even took him by surprise. The rocks that we had to climb up were huge. I mean, they really were, I'm not exaggerating. Each step that we went up to was like this, so you had to climb up, and then you had to go to the next one. It just went on and on and on. Now, this picture here was probably taken when we were about halfway up, I would think, probably about halfway up, and we still had to get to the top. Um, now, I'm quite a positive, half-full girl, um, and, you know, I like to see the positive side of things, but I became more and more despondent and more and more red in the face and more and more puffed as we went on. And I honestly thought I wasn't going to make it to the top. But James kept saying to me, don't look where you've got to get to. Just keep looking at the ground directly in front of you and follow my feet. Don't look up and just keep going. And that is exactly what I did. I didn't look at where I'd got to go because it was just too big a mountain, mountain to climb. Um, it was, and I just looked at the step that was in front of me and the next rock and the next rock. And I kept looking at James's feet that were in front of me. And I kept going. And I did make it to the top. And on the next slide, hopefully you'll see the view that we got to when we got to the top. It was absolutely breathtaking. Um, it was well worth it. And I was so chuffed, but very puffed, when I got to the top. And on the way down, we met lots of people who were still coming up. Um, and I was able to say to them, and they were saying things like, oh, I'll never get there. I'll go, yes, you will, you will. And it's really, really worth it. We kept saying to these people, keep going, keep going, it's worth it. And as we got back almost to the car park, there were people who were beginning to start the walk, and very, very unchristian of me, I kept thinking, huh, you don't know what's in front of you. Um, I know it's not very good, was it, really? But, you know, I think it must have been the same for Simeon and for Anna. 
They knew and believed what God had said about sending a Messiah. And they were looking forward to that time. But sometimes, just sometimes, they must have wondered when it was going to happen. As it seemed so far away and almost an impossibility. I suppose it must have been the same for Abraham when he was promised a son in his old age and nothing happened. But he kept looking forward. Now, Abraham, Simeon, and Anna must have all had days when they couldn't look forward anymore and they just wanted to give up. They would have had what I call hippo days. What are hippo days? It's when you're down in the mud and you're wallowing. And all they wanted to do was sit in a corner and have a darn good cry. But they and we can't stay in the mud forever. Even when life, people and circumstances cause us great difficulty. So how were they able to keep going? How did they keep looking forward? What specialist equipment, what specialist climb equipment and techniques did they have? What was their secret? What can they teach us about keeping going and keeping looking forward? Well, I'll tell you what, they had the right equipment and training. Just as you have to have the right equipment to climb a mountain, you have to have the right equipment to keep serving God. But how do you get the right equipment? They were where they could meet God and learn about him and be fed spiritually. In other words, they didn't skip church. And they didn't put other things first. They really, really, really wanted to meet Jesus and to get to know him and learn about him. And nothing was going to stand in their way. Now, I'm not suggesting that we all camp out at at the chapel day in and day out and follow Anna's example. But it's sometimes just so easy to make excuses not to come to church. It says in the Bible in Hebrews, not giving up meeting together, as are some in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Now, I'm not saying there aren't some genuine reasons. Of course there are. There's lots of them. When people really can't get to church, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about times when we blatantly put something else before coming to church. Something that you know, we'd much rather be doing, really. Something that we'd rather do more than come to church and to praise and worship God and learn about him. And there's also times when due to problems in our lives that we're going through, church is the last place we want to be. But I tell you what, you know, when you feel that church is the last place you want to be, it's just the place you need to be to learn and hear and praise. Simeon and Anna didn't do that. They put God first. They put themselves where they could be fed and they could gain strength and they could gain knowledge and they could keep looking forward. And we have to do the same thing too. But also, the second thing is they prayed and waited on God. They talked to him. They read about him. Do we read the Bible? Or if we've got five minutes and we've got our phone, do we open our Bible app or do we have a look at Facebook or Twitter? Just for a couple of minutes. They spent time with God And if you're going to get to know somebody, you have to spend time with them. If you want to have a close relationship with them, you have to spend time with them. And if you want to be keeping going forward, you have to spend time with God. And the third thing they did was they trusted God and they obeyed his commands even when it seemed like they had to wait forever. The Bible says Simeon was righteous and devout, and that Anna worshipped day and night, fasting and praying. Do you remember the old Sunday school chorus? Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. So I'd like to ask the question, are you looking forward? Are you looking forward, or are things just too hard at the moment? Now, I'm going to share something that I think probably others in the speaking team 
might have experienced as well. When you're preparing a message to come here, or very often as you've stood here the following week, something happens, a particular circumstance arise, and it's a bit like Satan saying, ha, huh, you put your money where your mouth is. You've stood up there and said this, put your money where your mouth is. It's happened to me more than once, and it happened again this week while preparing for this talk today. Lots of things have happened this week, which I couldn't possibly share with you. Circumstances of illness. I don't think I've left the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. There's been one thing after the other, and you just think, how much more can I cope with? And I kept thinking back to this message that I was going to bring to you this morning. And I kept thinking, I just have to take one day at a time, look directly in front of me, and keep looking forward slowly and trusting and following in Jesus' footsteps. And I just have to keep doing that. Are we having to look just in front, day by day, trusting him, because we really can't look any further forward? Can I say something? Trust him. Trust him and obey him, and you will reach that summit. And it might be, as you're looking forward to Christmas, that you're looking forward to all the happy things, the presents and the gifts and the chance to enjoy ourselves with friends and family and the food. Don't forget the food. Are you looking forward to all of that? Or actually, are you looking forward even past Christmas? Are you looking forward to when you can retire? When you can get a new house, have a new job, new shoes, new clothes? Or... Are you looking forward as Simeon and Anna were? Are you looking forward to spending time with Jesus? Are you looking forward to spending time with Jesus? But an even bigger question, are you looking forward to serving him in the coming year? Now that's a big one, isn't it? So I'd like to challenge you this morning Instead of looking forward for you, instead of looking forward for yourself, are you going to look forward for Jesus and how you can serve him? And as I ask the band to come up, shall we just say a closing prayer? Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that we can meet with you. Thank you for the example of Simeon and Anna, two faithful servants who looked forward, who looked forward, who trusted you and obeyed you. Help us to follow their example, Lord. Help us to trust you. Help us to obey you. And help us to look forward as we come to Christmas and the coming year. Not for ourselves, Lord. Help us to look forward for you. Help us to look forward to spend time with you. And most importantly, Lord, help us to look forward to serve you. We ask this in your name. Amen. This is the end of this message. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to find out more about our church, please visit www.chowdean.org.uk and please take a minute to rate our podcast on iTunes.